Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So you see, uh, uh, let, let me tell you, uh, 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 let me recall the notation that I used, okay. Uh, this is just to uh, make sure that I do not mess up the notation. So you know, uh, we have this situation that, uh, uh, so, so if you recall, what we had was, uh, uh, we had So you had x, uh, uh, x and y varieties, and you had small x in capital X, small y in capital Y, and uh, uh, you had uh, psi uh, from from the local ring of capital X at small x to uh, the local ring of capital Y at small y, uh, you had uh, an isomorphism, k algebra isomorphism, okay. We had this and then what we did was uh, we wanted to show that uh, uh, if you have two varieties and there are points uh, where the local rings are isomorphic, we wanted to show that there are open neighbourhoods surrounding those points which are actually isomorphic as varieties, okay. So, in other words there is an open set, we wanted to find an open set containing x and an open set containing y and an isomorphism between these two open sets, okay. And the point is that uh, that isomorphism uh, at local rings will induce this isomorphism, okay that is what we wanted to show. So, uh, what we did was, uh, so this was given to us, okay and what we did was. Uh, so, uh, of course, because uh, any variety is covered by uh, a finitely many open sets each of which is isomorphic to an affine variety, what we did was we took an affine variety, we took an open set containing small x which is an affine variety and an open set containing small y which is also an affine variety and therefore, uh, you know we had the diagram like this, we had x here, we had uh, x1 inside uh, x which is uh, uh, an affine open and uh, we had uh, uh, small x belonging here. Then we had capital Y uh, and we had this capital Y1 which is an affine open uh, sub variety which contains the point small y okay. And, uh, if you look at it uh, in, in terms of uh, 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 the, this is a geometric part, if you look at it competitive algebraically you got O x here th that corresponds to the regular functions on x, you have O y here and then 
you have this uh, restriction of regular functions on x to regular functions on x1 so you have o x1 but that is the same as a x1 okay and uh, and of course this is an this is an intuition because uh, that's because uh, uh, if a regular function is uh, zero on a proper open set which is non empty then it is zero everywhere okay and another way of saying it is of course that if two regular functions coincide on a non empty open set they coincide everywhere that's the reason why this is this map is injective it is a uh, and of and of course this map corresponds to restriction of regular functions to the open set uh, x1 and similarly you have an inclusion uh, with of this with o y1 and o y1 is the same as a y1 because uh, uh, and o x1 is the same as a x1 this is because x1 and y1 are affine varieties for affine varieties the ring of regular functions is the same as affine coordinate ring right and then of course then we go all the way to the point uh, th by going to the local ring at that point and um, the local ring will not change if you go to an open set if you go to a smaller open set which contains the point so this is the same as the local ring uh, of uh, uh, x uh, considered as a point of the open sub variety x1 right and similarly here we have uh, the local ring of capital Y at small y which is uh, the local also the local ring of uh, small y at as a point of capital Y1 alright and we know uh, uh, we know that you see the uh, we, we had given uh, names for these rings <coughs> we call this ring as A we call this ring as uh, B okay and uh, uh, the point uh, small x as a point of x1 will correspond uniquely to a maximal ideal of A and we call that maximal ideal as uh, uh, M and uh, the point y small y will be <coughs> will correspond uniquely to a maximal ideal of B we call that as uh, N or nita and so you know X uh, so this is so this local ring becomes uh, can be it can be identified with A localized at M okay this is the expression for a local ring at a point you take the uh, uh, if you have a point of an affine variety then the local ring at that point is given by simply taking the affine coordinate ring which is the same as the ring of regular functions and then localizing at the maximal ideal that corresponds to that point and similarly this is identified with B localized at N okay where M corresponds to uh, so this X corresponds to M in the uh, uh, maximal spectrum of A where A is A of X1 and uh, Y corresponds to uh, N which is uh, in the maximal spectrum which is set of maximal ideals of B uh, where B is of course uh, the affine coordinate ring of y1 right and then uh, of course we have uh, uh, then all this is happening inside the respective quotient fields all these things have the same quotient field uh, I mean this uh, 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 the quotient field of am is the same as the quotient field of this uh, is the same as quotient field of this which is the quotient field of a and that is also equal to the function field of x. So uh, what you must understand is that this is happening inside uh, 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 quotient field of A which is the same as quotient field of A sub M this is also equal to uh, well uh, function field of uh, uh, this is also equal to quotient field of uh, 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 that it is also equal to the function field of uh, X the field of rational functions of X is also equal to the field of rational functions of X1 the field of rational, rational functions does not change if you go to an open set okay and similarly uh, here I am going to get this is sit all this is going to sit inside uh, by the way uh, um, by the way I should also tell you that the when you go from the ring to its localization if the ring is an integral domain this is also an injective map okay from uh, from from a domain to its local ring to any of its localizations the natural map given by localization is an injective map because the source is a domain when you localize a domain you get a bigger sub ring of the quotient field of the domain okay. So, similarly B is a domain and if you localize B at 
uh, the maximal ideal nita you are going to get a bigger subring of the quotient field of uh, B this Q of B that is the same as a quotient field of any localization in this case it is a, a also the quotient field of uh, 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 the field of, which is a field of fractions of the local ring and this is also equal to the function field of Y1 so the function field of Y they are all the same okay and the point is that uh, it is at this level uh, so I have I have I have this isomorphism isomorphism here so I have this psi here this psi is given to me alright somehow I have to use this psi to produce an isomorphism between an open subset of x1 containing the point x and an, uh, with an iso with with an open subset of y1 containing the point y so I have to somehow cook up those open sets okay so uh, well uh, uh, so what uh, what we had done is that uh, uh, we had assumed that uh, uh, see the your your a uh, which is the affine coordinate ring of x1 uh, if, I, if, I rem if I look at the notation a, a was uh, k s1 etc sn divided by the ideal of x1 this corresponds to you know this corresponds to putting uh, because x1 is an affine variety okay x1 sits inside x1 sits inside some uh, a n okay and uh, if you take the affine coordinate ring of a n as a polynomial ring in the variables s1 through s n okay then the affine coordinate ring of x1 which is a x1 which we call as a is going to be just this polynomial ring divided by the ideal of x1 okay where of course here uh, when when I say x1 is being considered in an here it is being considered as an irreducible closed subset of an okay which identifies it as a as an affine variety right and uh, then we also have uh, similarly b is also a polynomial ring in m variables uh, divided by uh, the ideal of y1 where similarly what we are doing is that we are we are think since y1 is an affine open subset of y it means that y1 is an open subset of capital y but it is also abstractly isomorphic to an affine variety so therefore you can identify it you can embed it as an irreducible uh, closed subset of am and on this am if you take the t's t1 through tm to be the coordinate functions then the affine coordinate ring of that am is this polynomial ring in the t1 through tm and if you go modulo the ideal of y1 you will get the affine coordinate ring of y1 right and now in terms of these rings we have this inclusion of a uh, into am and uh, uh, this is b into bn okay and uh, of course a m is sitting inside the quotient field of a uh, uh, and b m is b n is sitting inside the quotient field of b and of course my uh, the, the isomorphism that is given to me is between uh, uh, a m and b n okay I, this is the k algebra isomorphism that is given to me of course all all uh, all ring homomorphisms we are considering are all k algebra homomorphisms okay and uh, uh, I mean essentially they are all uh, 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 as far as the uh, as far as the same variety is concerned they all correspond to going to uh, I mean going from here to here corresponds to taking germs of regular functions and then uh, uh, and then going from here all the way to the quotient field is trying to look at an equivalence class uh, trying to look at a regular function as a rational function and uh, across uh, from 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 one side to the other uh, we always think of uh, uh, ring homomorphisms as coming uh, because of uh, morphisms by a pullback of regular functions but the point here is that we have to construct the morphism we have to construct an isomorphism between an open subset of x1 and an open subset of y1 okay so uh, so what we did was uh, if you remember uh, so we we have put we have put we had made all these assumptions 
we had put psi of S i bar by 1 is equal to F i bar uh, by G i bar ok. The S i's are L are uh, polynomials here and the S i bars live in this quotient and you are considering the, them as uh, because this is a sub of this ok, this is a sub ring of this. So, you are considering them as elements here ok. So, S i bar by 1 is an element here and then I apply psi I get a quotient I get an element here uh, a quotient where G i bar is not in the uh, where G i bar is certainly not in uh, the, the maximal ideal n ok and uh, uh, and then uh, this has to be probably psi inverse uh, 1 by G i bar lives here this has to be psi inverse ok and uh, similarly I do for psi inverse I take the image of the coordinate uh, the generating coordinate variables variable the generating functions the T i T j's and uh, uh, so this is what I have. Now, now what I want you want you to check is that uh, uh, see you if you take this set uh, if you take if you take this localization uh, a localized at product of uh, g j bar product of a i bar b i bar product of psi inverse of uh, B J bar, okay, and you see, uh, and you take this, you take this localization, okay, and then you take this localization on, uh, as far as, uh, so this is, uh, you know, uh, A is going to sit inside this localization, and and B is going to sit inside this localization, and in this localization you take product of uh, product of capital G. Uh, I bar uh, to product of uh, A j bar B j bar and I think you will also have to take uh, uh, psi of <coughs> B i bar product of psi of capital B i bar ok. So, now the now the fact is that uh, uh, now the fact is that if you uh, of course, these localizations will sit inside uh, uh, a m and here inside b n ok. These localizations will sit here and uh, what you can check is that the way we have defined sin and sin was uh, you will get an isomorphism like this ok. You will get an isomorphism like this and that is just because of the universal property of uh, localization you will get a you will get a you will get a map like this and you will get a map in the reverse direction ok you will get an isomorphism between these two all right and such that this so you will get this map here which i would like to call uh, uh, by some name uh, maybe i'll call it as uh, uh, i don't know what i had uh, hmm. so it was probably phi so you know you have <coughs> you have this map uh, uh, Yeah, so uh, so let me put the arrow in this direction and call this as phi inverse. Okay, you will get a map like this, a K algebra sum of some phi inverse. Phi inverse will just come because of the universal property of uh, localization and uh, the way because of the way in which these are defined. And what will happen is that this phi inverse, you know, uh, uh, if you if you take this this phi inverse, uh, then I'll also get phi inverse. Uh, 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 what this phi inverse will do is that it will also induce an isomorphism here ok and this isomorphism will be the same as the isomorphism psi you st started with. So, you will get you will get something like this you will get this ok. You see everything uh, everything was constructed using psi alright. Therefore, uh, the the point about going inverting all these elements is to go to a uh, proper uh, I mean it is to go to a proper open subset to go to an open subset of uh, the affine variety with coordinate ring A ok. And 
the same way uh, inverting all these things here is the point is to go to an affine open subset of the variety y1 whose coordinate ring is b okay. So this this rep, this is the this is the affine coordinate ring of an affine open subset of uh, y1 and this is the affine coordinate ring of the affine, affine open subset of x1 okay and this isomorphism of affine coordinate rings gives an isomorphism between open subsets. So you know uh, so you know you 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 therefore so hence you will get hence we get uh, you see you have x and uh, inside you have x1 and in inside x1 you have this u okay and uh, where what is this u this u has affine coordinate ring given by this whole expression so this is a u okay and similarly so this is this is this is affine open and uh, this is also again affine open okay and similarly at the, at for y uh, you have y1 which is affine open and uh, here you if we call it as v that will also be an, another affine open and uh, what you will get is that you will get uh, you will get a morphism uh, 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 so I think uh, so notation wise uh, let me let me make let, let me do something let I, I say that I will get an isomorphism phi okay such that you know if you take the uh, isomorphism that it is that is induced by pull that is induced by pullback of regular functions because an isomorphism between affine varieties corresponds to an isomorphism uh, between their affine coordinate rings which is a k algebra isomorphism. So this will induce a phi hash so let me change this to phi hash okay uh, uh, and, and then the direction is correct so I will call this as phi uh, let me call simply this as phi hash okay and then this uh, this isomorphism uh, will take the point x to the point small x to the point small y so it will induce uh, an isomorphism of the local ring of y with the local ring of x and that is exactly this so that is so that is just phi upper hash uh, at y and and mind you this is oh, this is this this is identified with o u o v y okay which is which is of course you know the same as o uh, y1 y and is also the same as o y y right and this is identified with o uh, ux okay and y is of course uh, y is of course uh, phi x okay. So this phi hash at y this is isomorphism of the level of local rings this is the original psi that you started with okay. So, uh, so, so the moral of the story is if you start with uh, an isomorphism of uh, an, a k algebra isomorphism between the local rings at points of two varieties then those two varieties are birational that means there are open subsets on uh, on each which are isomorphic to one another okay and I told you that the property of two uh, varieties uh, uh, being isomorphic on open subsets is called birationality okay and so all you are saying is that if uh, the local rings uh, at two points of two varieties are isomorphic then the two varieties are birational. So this is just to tell you that uh, the local ring carries a lot of information okay it carries a lot of global information also reasonably so global information in the sense that it does not uh, carry information about the whole variety but it certainly carries information about a hu uh, about an open set uh, uh, containing the given point where you are considering the local ring but that open set is of course uh, uh, you know dense open set it is a, a non empty open set it is irreducible and dense because of the Zariski topology open sets are all huge okay therefore the local ring also contains information over a huge open set okay. So that is a so you know that uh, so as a matter of fact you know uh, 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 you must also notice that uh, the dimension of the local ring is the same as the dimension of the variety. So the moment uh, the local rings uh, uh, at, at two given points of two varieties are isomorphic 
it means that first of all it means that the varieties are having the same dimension okay. So you can't if this will not happen if the varieties do not have the same dimension okay. If the varieties are of different dimension then uh, you cannot find an isomorphism even uh, I mean you cannot you can you cannot find an isomorphism between local rings of from point from a point of one variety to a point of the other variety okay. Therefore the first thing you should notice is that once you have an isomorphism of local rings it already tells you that the two varieties are having the same dimension but the story is more the the fact is that uh, the the isomorphism of uh, local rings actually make them makes them birational okay. So uh, so that is so that uh, that is to say uh, uh, about uh, the power of local rings but then I I also want to tell you about uh, 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 I also want to tell you in connection with this about uh, uh, the power of function fields okay. So uh, so the next result that I am going to talk about is about the fact that you know uh, if you have two varieties such that their function fields are isomorphic as k algebras okay then also they are birational okay. So uh, isomorphism of function fields of two varieties is also uh, uh, you know it also has the same effect as having an isomorphism of local rings okay. So um, let me give this notebook back to you. So um, so let me make so so here is a theorem. So this is kind of uh, uh, because it is connected with this I am I am continuing with this uh, if two varieties uh, so this tells you about the importance of function fields okay if two varieties have isomorphic function fields then they are birational and conversely okay. Uh, two varieties x and y with isomorphic uh, as k algebras function fields are birational. So this is uh, you know now the now I am uh, 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 for a moment I am I am trying to tell you about the importance of function fields right. So uh, you know the function field of a variety is an invariant in the sense that uh, it will only change up to isomorphism if you change the variety up to isomorphism okay. Uh, so uh, of course if two varieties are birational okay then there is an isomorphism on open sets okay and this isomorphism on open sets will create will lead to an isomorphism of the function fields okay and you know the function field will not change if you go to an open set okay. So if two varieties are birational then certainly their uh, function fields are isomorphic that is obvious okay but what is not obvious is the other way around if you just say that the field of rational functions on one variety is isomorphic as a k algebra okay to the field of rational functions on another variety that is good enough to say to saying that uh, uh, that is as good enough as saying that the varieties are themselves isomorphic on open subsets namely that they are birational okay. So uh, so the so the proof for this also runs in a in a in more or less uh, uh, in the same uh, I mean the ideas are nearly the same as in this proof okay. So what you do is see you have uh, so you have uh, so I have so I have x I have y varieties all right uh, and I have kx uh, and I have ky uh, they are the function fields and I am given uh, and I am given an isom of some uh, let me call this a zeta. Okay, this is a k algebra isomorphism. So I have k algebra isomorphism between the function fields of two varieties. Okay, and uh, what I want to say is that uh, uh, just as in this case, the 
when you have an isomorphism of local rings as you are able to cook up two open sets where they are isomorphic you can also cook up open sets here and here where uh, the two varieties are isomorphic okay just an isomorphism at the function field level is enough okay and how do you do that so you know again what we'll do is uh, uh, we'll we'll go to uh, 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 so so just as we did there uh, we went to uh, a fine open sets okay which is uh, uh, which helps us to translate everything into commutative algebra okay so we can do the same thing here we can assume that x1 is an affine open in x and uh, you know uh, y1 is an affine open in y and well uh, if you go to an affine open of course whenever I say open set it is a non empty open set I am not worried about the empty open set okay. So if you go to an affine uh, uh, open set then uh, well uh, what happens is the function field does not change okay the function field does not change. Uh, so this is the same as k of x1 and this is the same as k of y1 okay. So uh, it is enough to show that x1 and y1 are birational okay because that will mean that x and y are also birational just be just because x1 is just an open subset of x and y1 is an open subset of y. So you know again I follow the same uh, I follow with the same notation so what I do is I, I, I think of x1 as sitting inside an okay and I think of y1 as sitting inside am alright and I take on an I take the coordinates to, to be s1 through sn on, on, on am I take the coordinates to be t1 through tm okay and I write a to be the affine coordinate ring of x1 b to be the affine coordinate ring of y1 okay I use the same notations but the only thing that is missing is I do not have this I do not have these two points and the local rings and an isomorphism between local rings I do not have that but I have the I have the isomorphism here I have the isomorphism at the quotient field level because after all the quotient field uh, of the affine coordinating of a variety is the same as the function field of the variety. So what I have now is as before as before uh, what you we get we get the following diagram you get a diagram similar to this only that you do not get this okay this is not given to you there is no point here going to a point there such that the local rings are isomorphic there is only an isomorphism between the quotient field of A and the quotient field of B. So what happens we get we get this diagram so let me write it down here so A is the affine coordinate ring of x1 and you know what I have done is uh, as in that case I have embedded x1 as uh, an irreducible closed uh, subset of uh, an so that its affine coordinate ring becomes the affine coordinate ring of that an which is the polynomial ring in the uh, in the coordinates s1 through sn modulo the ideal of x1 in the affine space okay and I have on this side I have y1 also embedded as an irreducible closed uh, uh, subset of am and here again I will get uh, if I take the of uh, the the coordinates on am to be t1 through tm then uh, if I take k of t1 through tm this is going to be the this is the coordinate ring of the affine space am and then if I go modulo the ideal of y1 I end up with b which is the affine coordinate ring of y1 okay and then what I now have is well this is sitting inside the quotient field of a and but the quotient field of a is uh, is just the function field of x1 and that is the same as the function field of x and similarly this is sitting inside uh, the quotient field of b uh, which is the quotient the function field of y1 and which is also same the same as the function field of y and now I have this I have this isomorphism zeta which is an isomorphism between these two function fields okay. Now you know uh, 
now I have to play nearly the same game as I did here uh, and well the uh, in fact the truth is that you know somehow uh, in a way uh, if I had proved this statement first okay then that statement would have been easier to prove because you know if I had given you this statement first then uh, if you go back to this situation this isomorphism between local rings will induce an isomorphism between the, the quotient fields and once I have isomorphism between the quotient fields uh, if I grant that I have already proved that it is birational I am already done. So in a way this could have been deduced from here but then uh, there is no harm in doing it like this because you learn some techniques okay. So basically what we do in this situation is the following so you know you take you look at uh, all these SIs okay uh, uh, which are in the polynomial ring they their images in A are the SI bars okay and they are all elements of this uh, of this uh, quotient field and you you apply zeta to them okay. So what will happen is that you get all these SI bar each of these SI bars going to uh, I mean you are thinking of SI bar as SI bar by 1 uh, that is the way you think of uh, elements of the domain as elements of the quotient field okay and uh, you apply zeta to this. So I will get zeta of SI bar by 1 alright alright and uh, the point is that all these uh, wh what are these zeta SI bars by 1 uh, well they are rational functions on they are rational functions on y1 they are rational functions on y1 and you know what is a rash uh, I, so you know you should remember that uh, k y1 is uh, rational functions on y1 up to an equivalence okay. So rational function is given by a regular function on an open set and two such pairs consisting of a regular function and an open set on which it is defined are said to be equivalent if in the intersection of those two open sets the corresponding regular functions coincide okay and mind you any two non-empty open sets will always intersect because of irreducibility okay. So, uh, so you know any rational function here is a regular function on an open set. So you know each psi zeta i bar by 1 is regular on some open set it is a regular function on some open set and there are only n of them okay. So if you take the intersection of all those open sets then these fellows will become regular functions on that common open set okay. So you know so so let me write that this is this is regular on uh, on uh, u let me call this as uh, these open sets uh, vi open inside uh, y1 okay these are all regular there and uh, similarly I can do it the other way around. So what I can do is you know uh, uh, I can also look at the, the t's okay the tj's are all uh, uh, coordinate functions here and, and their images in b will be the tj bars and then you take their images here the quotient field then followed by zeta inverse okay and I am going to get rational functions on this side okay. So the same argument applies so if I take the tj bar divided by 1 and then you know if I apply uh, if I apply uh, uh, zeta inverse mind you then I will then I will then I will end up with the zeta inverse of uh, tj bar by 1 and uh, these fellows are going to be uh, regular functions on uis where uis are open subsets of x1 okay. So these are going to be regular functions functions on ui which are open uh, open in x1 okay. So I am so I'm going to end up like this now you see uh, if you so if you look at if you look at that carefully uh, uh, so let me rub this so you know what you do is you do the following thing so this, uh, this zeta of SI bar by 1 
is a regular function on vi for each i i equal to 1 to n okay now you take the intersection of all those vi's okay put v put v equal to uh, uh, intersection or uh, v is equal to intersection i equal to 1 to n vi okay put this then you see uh, then the zeta of s1 bar by 1 and so on zeta of sn bar by 1 they are all in o v okay they are all regular functions on v all right because uh, uh, each one is regular on vi and all of them put together is going to are going to be regular on v all right so you know uh, the point is that uh, uh, you see uh, we use this fact here so if you recall if you recall the there is a uh, there is a canonical bijection between the morphisms of varieties from uh, 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 any variety uh, if I call it as uh, so I am short of notation so uh, let me use some uh, script notation I am short of symbols so let me use some script notation you take any variety x and you take an affine variety y okay and if you look at the set of morphisms of varieties from script x to script y alright script x to script y then this is in a natural bijection with the set of all uh, homomorphisms of k algebras from uh, uh, a y to o x and mind you a y is the same as o y because y is affine ok. See we have already seen this we, we have seen this bijection set the set of all uh, morphisms from a variety into an affine variety is in bijective correspondence with the set of all k algebra homomorphisms from uh, the fine coordinate ring of the target affine variety to the uh, regular functions on uh, uh, the source variety okay. Now you know you see uh, now you see what do you do with these guys okay what you do with these guys is that uh, uh, you know uh, I can use this to define uh, I can use these uh, these regular functions and regular functions to define a morphism from V into uh, 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 x1 okay. So what you do is you see you see what you do is the following I mean it is exactly uh, if you go back and look at it that is how we established this bijection okay. So what you do is you see you uh, uh, you have uh, see zeta restricted to uh, uh, zeta restricted to a will actually go from a into uh, zeta of a which is a sub of uh, ov okay you see zeta if you see this zeta is from the quotient field of a to the quotient field of b all right and what is any element of a any element of a is a polynomial in the si bars okay any element the see the si's generate the polynomial ring of affine space and their images will generate the SI bars will generate A even any element of capital A is actually can be thought of as a polynomial in the SI bars okay and therefore you know uh, uh, but all the SI bars their images under zeta are all lying are, are they are all landing in the k algebra OV they are all landing in the k algebra OV and therefore you see zeta will land inside ov the image of zeta will land inside ov 
all right and as a result you see you get a k algebra homomorphism from a which is uh, a of x1 to ov if you apply this bijection this will correspond to a morphism of varieties from uh, v to uh, 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 v to x1 all right so you know in the in in this uh, you you apply uh, with script x equal to v and script y equal to x1 okay and you will get a morphism from v to x1 so so by this by this result this gives rise to a morphism of varieties from uh, v to x1 okay you get a morphism like this and in fact you know uh, it is even uh, uh, it is even easy to write uh, what that morphism is it is even easy to write what that morphism is the morphism is see after all this v is uh, see this v uh, <coughs> uh, this v is an open subset of y1 and y1 is v is an open subset of y1 y1 is sitting in affine space so you know any point of v is given by m coordinates okay and uh, you, you know you just take this point of v with the m coordinates mu1 etc mu m and you know what you, you will have to send it to you will have to just send it to <coughs> you know these are all regular functions on v okay these are regular functions on v all right and therefore they are given by quotients of polynomials in m variables on v and you substitute for those m variables these 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 uh, these these values okay so that will give you an n tuple and that n tuple will precisely be an n tuple of a and it will land inside x1 okay so if you call this as mu okay then this is just this is just the map psi s1 bar by 1 of mu and so on uh, uh, sorry zeta s1 bar by 1 uh, acting on uh, I mean evaluated at mu and so on up to zeta sn bar by 1 uh, uh, evaluated at mu. So you will get this you will get this n tuple and this n tuple will be a point of n in fact it will be a point of x1 that is how this bijection was established if you, if you go back to that lecture and try to recall okay. So you get this morphism like this okay and uh, you know if you call this uh, so you know if you call this morphism as uh, 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 again uh, let me use some notation uh, uh, so now, now let me use uh, you know, so let me use psi here uh, or let me use some other notation uh, hmm. so I will use capital psi okay I will use a block psi like that so I have a morphism like this right and uh, what is the meaning that this comes from this it means that this is actually psi hash the map from here to here is just uh, 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 neta going to neta hash because you know given a morphism of varieties you have the uh, morphism at the uh, regular uh, functions level given by pullback of regular functions okay and the what does it mean to say that I started with zeta restricted to a here and I ended up with this psi there it means that this psi <coughs> is zeta uh, uh, sorry I started with the zeta restricted to a here and I got a psi here it means that psi hash is that zeta okay so this zeta restricted to a is psi hash all right and moreover uh, uh, and this psi you know um, what you must remember is that this psi Individual psi hash is zeta, and mind you, 
this zeta is part of an isomorphism at the quotient field level this this zeta from a to o u o v if I go to the quotient field okay if I uh, if I go to the quotient field level it is an isomorphism zeta is an isomorphism of the quotient field level that is something that you should not forget alright. But anyway you know you can so what we have done is you know uh, if you look at the uh, 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 so, so let me rub this diagram lest, lest it cause any confusion. So you know the situation is now that what we have done is we have we have this x and we have this x1 which is affine open inside x and well uh, uh, of course we embedded x1 inside <coughs> affine space but that is not important now and then there is y1 here this is also affine open in y and uh, you see what I have done is I have got this v uh, which is an which is an open set in y1 and I have got a morphism like this I have got a morphism like this all right and in the same and for that I use the fact that all the zeta si bar they are all regular functions on this open set. Now I play the same game with zeta inverse of the tj bars okay so uh, uh, so similarly if we put u equal to intersection i equal to 1 to I mean j equal to 1 to m of uj okay then uh, 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 then zeta inverse of t1 bar by 1 etc up to zeta inverse of t <coughs> m bar by 1 they are all going to be in ou okay where u is an open subset of uh, u is an open subset of x1 okay and therefore if you if you take zeta inverse and restrict it to b it is going to give you a map from b to ou okay uh, and uh, 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 so I should, I should say from b to zeta b which is sitting inside ou mind you this is an isomorphism this is also an isomorphism because they are images under an injective ring home k algebra homomorphism okay. So zeta b is uh, so zeta inverse b goes into ou alright and uh, uh, <coughs> so you know again uh, by this yoga what will happen is that you are going to get a morphism of varieties. from uh, uh, u to y1 given by some let me call it as phi capital phi like this okay such that <coughs> uh, uh, well uh, when you take this morphism and you take the pullback by regular functions it gives you you get phi hash and this phi hash is actually equal to zeta inverse all right. So this means that you know uh, we have got one like this. So you have uh, you have u <coughs> open inside x1, and you have got a you have got a. So if this is if this is uh, this is psi, uh, then this is phi. Okay. So u is here. I have uh, I have u sub of this. So I have psi inverse of u. this is an open subset of this okay and then here I take phi inverse of c inverse of u uh, that is that here is an open subset okay and the fact is that phi will carry this into this and uh, psi will carry this into this. The only thing that you will have to worry about is that the image of psi the image of psi has to intersect u okay that is uh, that is an important thing because if the image of psi does not intersect u then psi inverse u will become empty alright and uh, and similarly the image of uh, phi should intersect uh, psi inverse u okay and 
so these these non emptiness statements come because uh, uh, the the uh, both psi and phi at the uh, at the pullback of regular functions level they, they induce in fact injective maps okay and it is this injectivity uh, that ensures that uh, uh, first that uh, if you take u will intersect the image of psi and that uh, similarly uh, psi inverse u will intersect the image of phi okay that is because of the injectivity of uh, uh, that follows from the way we have constructed them right and therefore you get this uh, you get these uh, uh, you get these maps and they will be inverses to each other. So the the fact that you are using is that you know if you have two open sets and you have uh, uh, if you have two open sets I mean if you have uh, two varieties and you have two morphisms going in opposite directions such that you know the composite morphisms so phi followed by c here and then uh, uh, psi followed by phi there if they induce identity at the quotient field level okay if they induce identity at the quotient if they induce the identity map at the quotient field level identity of the quotient field then they have to be inverse isomorphisms okay. So you know if you go to the quotient field level psi followed by phi is just going to be applying uh, you know this psi is going to induce uh, you see this psi, psi induces zeta at the quotient field level, phi induces zeta inverse at the quotient field level. So you know psi composition phi and phi composition psi they will induce identity maps at the quotient field level if you have two morphisms alright uh, which induce upon composition identity at the quotient field level then those morphisms then those morphisms have to be inverses of each other okay. So, uh, so that will tell you that you have uh, so this gives uh, open subsets of uh, x1 and y1 uh, which are isomorphic as what I guess. Uh, what I wanted to remark is that uh, you know this uh, uh, when we the way we got the isomorphism the birationality in the case of isomorphisms of local rings so the same thing will also work in this case okay. So what you can do is that uh, you, you can you can uh, uh, you can do something like this okay which was in the uh, local ring case right. So in fact <coughs> uh, uh, you can write you can get these things uh, uh, more explicitly by doing like this okay. Uh, so you know you so if I so if I rub this off and uh, try to write that out explicitly okay so you just have to take uh, see if you take zeta of uh, uh, SI bar by 1 this is a this is an element here in the quotient field of B so it is a it is a fraction so it is a so it is some f i bar by g i bar okay and then uh, so you know uh, and then if you take uh, the uh, if you apply zeta inverse to 1 by g i bar right. I will get some uh, <coughs> uh, AI uh, I will get uh, yeah I will get an AI bar by B i bar okay. So 1 by uh, so if I take zeta of S i bar by 1 I will get F i bar by G i bar where F i bar and G i bar are you know polynomials in 
the T bars okay they are they are elements of B and, and because this is after all the fraction field of fractions of B every element here looks like a quotient of elements of B okay and I will I'll, and if I take the 1 by G i bar okay which also makes sense in the quotient field of B okay and I apply zeta inverse I will again get A i bar by B i bar alright and uh, zeta inverse of uh, if I apply zeta inverse to T j bar by 1 uh, I will end up with some capital A i bar by B i bar I mean A j bar by B j bar where a j capital A j and capital B j are polynomials here okay in the S s right and uh, if I take uh, if I apply zeta to 1 by B j bar okay <coughs> then that is going to go to uh, 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 some uh, small f j bar by small g j bar. And now what one has to do is that uh, 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 so the whenever I have applied zeta I am on the I am on the you know I am on the side of the B uh, I am I am working with the T bars and whenever I have applied zeta inverse I am working with the S bars okay. So these two uh, these two are connected with the T bars and these two are connected with the S bars. Mm -hmm.